right everybody welcome back to my channel so today we're gonna do a jingle block reindeer reindeers are my favorite i just love deers in general so i'm gonna use these tumbling tower jingle blocks they are actually from dollarama they're the most comparable size to the dt ones we never get the dt ones in my location for whatever reason whether they sell out but the staff tells me they haven't had them for a long time so i'm going to use the ones that are more comparable to the dt ones i believe i did some measurements with another crafter and they are pretty much the same size so what you're going to need to do for the first step is we're going to do the legs we are going to use eight jenga block per leg and I just glued some already, so I'm just gonna show you, make sure, because as I was gluing them, I got mixed up. So you're gonna glue them this way, not this way. And you're gonna do, use eight per leg times four. So I will show you, I've already glued four, uh, four legs already together and that equals 32 blocks. We're gonna start on the body. Now the body itself is 16. So the four, 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 16. And we're gonna do layers up, going up exact same design, and we're gonna go up six layers. Once I get these ones glued on, we will move on to the next step. Next step, we will be doing the neck. So we will have six blocks times three sections. You need to glue them all together like this. The front part of the neck will be five sections, not like this, on the side you need times three which are 15 blocks i will give you the total block amount used at the end of the video and once you glue those ones on so i'm not trying to make it too boxy this has a little bit of depth to it so this will be part of the neck i may add some of this but I'm gonna show you that as we go on I may not so then you need to glue this piece on together oh I did want to mention too I forgot to mention earlier that I'm using weld bond I was calling it weld bond in a few of my videos it's actually called weld bond and this one's really good because I find that it works better than e6000 I don't know if you guys have seen any of the um, there's some posts out there that uh, E6000 is not good for you. It's very toxic. You should use it in a very well ventilated area or a mask when you use it. This one here I find works better. It's actually stronger. I did some tests on Jenga blocks before, as I mentioned in some of my, some of my other videos that I've done with Jenga blocks. Um, I find this one is a lot stronger and dries like almost double the time than e6000 and it does dry clear it comes out white but it does dry crystal clear and i just find it works really well now i bought mine at rona you can buy it at rona you can buy it at lowe's uh, i did see it at michael's um and where there was another place oh and amazon you can buy it but with Amazon, you gotta remember that it costs with shipping unless you have Amazon Prime and you just gotta watch. So the one I bought at Rona, and this is here in Canada, I think I paid uh, just under $6 for it. I find it a lot better, even better than E6000 considering that it, the tube, the bottle itself works better than the tube. And if you guys all have used E6000 before, you know that the tube with um, E6000 is just a nightmare to work with that tube. And I find the bottle is much better. And this one is also non-toxic, so 100% better. So let me get this glued on for the, the neck, neck, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I just wanted to come back. I did show you um the body part and i just wanted to touch base with that so i did it three jangle blocks high by the four 
and then the three. I just wanted to show you because now it's all glued. Geez, if it came out of the box like that, I could have just kept it all uh, in one piece. But anyways, so I got that done. So that's the body part. The head as I, sh or the neck as I showed you, it's indented on both sides. As you can see, it's there's just a little bit, just to give it some dimension, which will be put on the front. Now, I showed you the legs. I'm just doing a recap here. Sorry, guys. It's been a couple uh, a couple days since I actually done this, so I just wanted to do a quick rehab, recap. So the next thing that we're going to do is the head. So on the bottom part of the head, I just had some pieces already glued here. So you're going to take the three, and you're going to make one like this. This will be the base. I'll call it the base of the head so and then you'll want to glue those on top so you'll need this one piece like such together so i'm going to just sh show you piece by piece because i have i glued some pieces already but i'm just going to show you how it's going to look once you do that you're going to do the back of the head so you're going to need three on top of three on top of two so it'll be like such you glue it center like that and then i guess you can the long snout part i guess if you want to call it the mouth part we will do now these are the mini ones those are the regulars these are the mini ones so we do four now, if you have any ideas, you can always change it up. There's no right and wrong in crafting. However, however you think, maybe you want to change it up. You have your own ideas, which is also awesome. I don't know why that's... So you do four, you do three, and you do two. Now, I'm just going to show you. Oh, and then you do... This is going to be the nose part of it. So we have this part. So I've already glued some pieces together. The back of the head which it'll be like such. The snout, which was the mini ones, will go on the front like such, which would be like this and like this looking. And then the two will be the nose that will be, well, let me just do it if I can do it this way so I can show you on the angle. I don't wanna put my head there, so you guys can see and then the little nose part on of it on it so I have to glue all these ones together but I wanted to show you so it will be like this so the next step now I'm just gonna move these all out of the way the next step I'm gonna show you so with the mini ones I wanted to do some ears so let me just I should actually just pull this back. So I wanted to do some ears on it, sticking from the back, not the antlers. We'll get to the antlers. Basically like that. But in order to do that, because I wanted to have a nice flat look, I actually just took, um, Dollar Tree has this little hacksaw. And I had one before, and I think it was for one of the jewelry holder wall holders that I made. And it worked really well, but I broke it, I think, at one point. So, I mean, it was cheap enough to buy, so I bought another one today. I did on the angles on both ends. So, when you stick it under, when you glue it on, let's see, how can I show you here? It will be level to the back. So that you will have the ear, oh, however you want to place it. I'd probably put it a little bit of at an angle that you will do that. So you will need three of them. Now, it didn't take me long. I think it less than five minutes to cut each one with that. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of elbow grease, as they call it. It just takes a little bit of time to do it. So I'm just going to stick these ones in here. So like such. And I did an extra one. Because the back, now let me just move these ones. The back of it is going to be for the tail. So let me move these ones here. When you put it on, oops, it will be flush to the back of the 
the back of the Jenga on his butt. Now for the butt, we're gonna do exactly like the, the top part of the mouth. Do you, on this part with the four, the three, the two that we have there, I did exactly another one, which is kind of, it gives a little bit of volume once again to the back of the butt. Might have been a little bit thicker butt, but that's okay. He's a little white tail. So that's how, I'm just gonna show you here. That's how I'm gonna put it on like that, just to give it a little bit of dimension because then I didn't want everything so square. The next step, and I have to get up for one second because I have to find my dowels and my dowels have now gone missing. Oh, oh, they're there. So also for the, the I did one just as a, a tryout to see what I wanted to do. Now I have these square dowels. You can use round ones. I had square ones. Um, I'm not sure where I got them from because the package was open and it was in my container with all my kind of woodworking um, stuff. So I don't know if they were DT or Dollarama, but all I did was take some dowels. Now some wood dowels and I cut them and then I didn't use the saw but you can use the saw um and I when I cut them I did put them on an angle as you can see in the photo they're on an angle now I didn't use the saw I'll show you what I used I believe I showed you guys in another video I'm trying to remember which video I showed you I think it was for the truck when I was cutting uh, the jingle block truck that I did that I was cutting the um, some of the blocks for around the wheel well. So I got this little machine here. It's called a mini cutoff saw. It's just a little table saw. I know someone's asked me about it a few times already. A couple different people. It's actually just ordered it from Amazon and Amazon in Canada. So I ended up spending $50 for it, but it works really well if you're going to be cutting like popsicle sticks for any craft that you do. And I've noticed recently, I've been using it a lot more since I've got it. I've had no issues with it. So cutting the dowels, I'm just gonna show you here. You can actually move the, the part where it holds pieces. That's pretty cool. Cause this is the first time that I, I, I didn't even realize it actually moved this other part. I didn't know what this red dial was. You know, my first time using an actual saw. I'm just going to show you here. I'm not actually going to cut one. I'm just going to show, show you what I mean. So I was using it the straight, the straight way all the time, just thinking, oh, but I didn't know what the red dial. I'm just going to show you here on this one. And I actually unscrewed it and it moves. So when, I hope you can see it, when I'm going to cut it, it actually cut on an angle down, as you can see inside. So if you need to move it on an angle, I found it worked really great. So that's what I did for for those for the antlers for that one. So I will repeat the step and I'll do another one. I'll probably change it up a little bit, maybe have it the exact same. I'm not um, sure how we're how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm gonna glue some of these pieces together. I uh, and then I will show you that before we move on to the painting part. Okay, everybody, I wanted to show you that I'm actually, I glued it all together and I'm just going to show you a couple things because I did modify it a bit. So sorry for the kind of back because it's big and I'm just trying to get as much in the picture as I can. So for the tail, I re, uh, the butt part, I actually did the modification and I omitted one layer of the tail because I found it stuck out too much and I just thought it was better that it stuck at the end with the tail here. I'm gonna move it this way. And I actually added just an extra block on the flat part um, of the back part of the head, just an extra block just for a little bit of height. I thought the ears and the antlers worked really well. So my next step will be to paint it. And I got a couple things that I'm gonna show you once I paint it. Um, I did want to just say though, during uh, gluing it together, uh, which I found the easiest part because I was trying to figure out the best way, and I'm sure you guys all know, but um, the main part of the body I just turned upside down. I did the legs first. 
the next part I did was attach the neck. So I did use some well bond glue, the glue that I've showed you in many videos that I use, and I use hot glue as well. I did the exact same for the thing, uh, exact, sorry, the exact same thing for the butt and the tail, and same with the antlers. I will just sh turn it around. Now I just glued them and hot glued at the same time, and I used the E6000 for the same support. So I'm kind of really excited. I'm actually going to just paint it. Uh, let me just, sorry, I gotta get up here. I'm going to use some gel, I can't find it. I believe I used it for one of my last projects. It's just um, some gel stain. I found the gel stain worked really well and dries pretty quickly. You can paint it any color. You can actually just use some acrylic brown if you want. I'm just going to do the total stain on it and I do have some little adjustments that I want to do. I will show you on the antlers and I did find this great little scarf for it. So let me just get this this little guy painted and then we will come back and uh, I'll show you. So I wanted to show you what it looked like when it was done. Sorry about the view guys. It's hard to get into the picture so he's quite tall I just wanted to show you that it and the lighting's not the best but uh I only did the one coat of the stain I bought it at Rona and it's just a gel stain you can pick really any color what you like this one I'm trying to see the name on it and I don't see a uh, dark a dark walnut so I think it was like maybe 12 bucks just for this little can, but it worked really well. So there's a couple things that I'm going to add to it. And I'm just going to show you because there's going to be obviously some stuff I'm going to do off the camera. On the antlers, um, I got these little bells. Just little bells in this tray. Hope you guys can see this because it's kind of awkward so far from the camera instead of doing it over top because I can't fit the tripod over top. I'm actually just going to add these little bells on each end of the antlers. I'm just going to glue those on. I'm just going to use hot glue for those. I got this scarf here from Dollar Tree. It's just a, it's like a men's fleece scarf because I wanted to put a scarf on them. Now you could put like, um, what's a, another thing you could do? You could put a, a reef around him. Now I'm just going to move over here. I'm just going to kind of show you. I don't want him to fall. I know you guys can't, it's kind of hard with the black curtains. But what I want to do is I want to add this little scarf just like this. I already cut a piece out of it and it's great because for what you paid for it and there's so much material left that you can use it for another crafting project and I'm just gonna tie this on right here you can glue it I just think it looks super cute on him I call it him I guess it could be either him or her but I just think it's super cute so I wanted to do that I'm gonna glue the bells on now I'm just gonna move this sideways here for, I'm just looking, sorry, in the camera here, guys. For the tail. Now, the tail sticking out, you don't have to do anything. I had a few ideas. Asked my son what he thought. Uh, my daughter wasn't around, so I got his opinion. Now, I had some fun fur. Just some uh, fun fur from, uh, I don't know where it is because I, I don't have it on hand. It's in my basement. But it's just fun fur on a ribbon roll. Now, I had... The white, I thought the white was cute. No, I had a piece here cut. I'm just gonna show you. Just to add a little, I don't wanna overpower it. I don't wanna put any googly eyes on it. I wanna keep it kind of simple. You know, I thought the little white looked good on it for the little tail, but my son does not like it and thinks the little brown one would be better. Uh, so I will put attach that on there. Now, oh, and I'm just going to move it here again. And I grabbed, now, you know the little glass beads you can get at Dollar Tree? 
and you can get them at Dollarama, but at Dollar Tree. I painted one red. I'm going to do another coat on it. And I was thinking about how it would just be cute and simple. So we're not going to put any eyes or anything, but put, oops, oops, is putting a cute little red nose on it. I think it looks super cute. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna show you this once it's all done. Then I'm gonna take some black paint. I got this at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do, oops. I'm gonna just do a little bit of the brown, or sorry, the black, just to trim around the bottom of the feet, just to give it a little bit extra, looking like they have hooves on the bottom, just a little bit. I'm not gonna do it too prominent, just a little bit, just to add a little bit feature. I did try the googly eyes on it, did not like it, made it look, I don't know, I, that wasn't my preference. But all of you crafters out there, you might have a different idea that you really like. And the best thing about it, and even with the being with the, the flat back, and I don't, oh, I have one here. I have a little poinsettia. You can use it for a little stand. Uh, you could also swap it out for, you know, maybe you, sorry, I'm just trying to grab some stuff here. Just, it's a different thing. You don't have to put nothing on it or, you know, you could put some sitting little gnomes on it. It's uh, kind of versatile as much as it looks as pretty. You could use it as a stand. You could put a Christmas cactus on it. Really, you can put anything that you like. I just thought the show you the little bit different options you can have with it. So I'm gonna do those little things that I showed you and I'm gonna put them on and then I will come back and show you the final product. All right, so I thought I'd show you the final result. I put the little bells on the antlers, the little red nose. I just used a little wire to tie the scarf and put a little bell on it. And I just didn't think it turned out really well. You can put Elf on the Shelf maybe on there. You can put a poinsettia. You can put a gnome all around. I think it just turned out super cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please sure. Please make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.